here. Amen. Okay, so last last Sunday, if you were if you were, if you saw our 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 um, online cast and that we we did our service on Sunday, we talked about um, <laughs> we talked about um, John two, which is the scripture where we were at, and the title of the message I believe was something about Mary, or or another way of 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 looking at it is to say you know well you know um, whatever Jesus says. To, to do just do it because Mary turned to the to the to the um, the servants to this the people who were at the wedding and she said to them listen whatever he says do it and um it's 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 interesting that line just kept um getting in my spirit and I couldn't shake it and um the Lord just told me to, to share this with you so Sunday gone if you if by the way if you want because I'm, I'm not going to touch the whole thing but if you want to, you know, if you said if you missed it and you wonder, well, I didn't get to see that that you know that's that sermon. You, if you log on to, to our Facebook page, Family Word and Worship. If you log on to our, you know, to YouTube and go Family Word and Worship, you will see all of the sermons you know, going back a couple of weeks, I believe. You will see, um, you know, so you don't don't worry, you're not gonna miss anything. But just for a recap, John chapter two verse verses one says this on the third day of. Third, on the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. That's important. Woman, he said in verse 4, Why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Watch this. His mother said to the servants, Interesting. Do whatever he tells you. She don't turn back to him. She and him don't have any more conversation after that, that we know of. She turns to the servants and she says, do whatever he tells you. Even after he just rejected her. Keep going. Verse 6. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing. Each holding from 20, sorry, to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Don't miss that. That's key. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. Draw some out, take it to the master of the banquet. Please note, please um, underline that or mark that in your Bible because I'm going to come back to that. It's very key. I'm going to show you an interesting nugget on that. They did so and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Bow your heads with me. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this opportunity to, to break the bread, bread of heaven. Thank you, Lord, that every heart is arrested right now and everybody who's listening to this will just, you know, be still and just feel and know what you are saying to us at this moment. Father, I thank you that you will guide my lips, you will guide my heart, you will guide my mind, that I will share only what you want me to share. And it will certainly be a blessing to someone today. I give you praise and I give you thanks as we are ready to receive from you what you have to say. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen. Type an Amen. Come on, type an Amen and send it to me. Amen. Bless God. Okay. Now, you all know, you know, after, you know I mean, it's, it's worldwide. You know, we're all shut down and we're all under quarantine and our lives have been affected. We are, we are just, you know, all, it's altered. We can't move as freely as we want to. You know, nobody's moving, nobody's flying. There's economic concerns. People are wondering, what's going to happen to my job? Churches are wondering, what's going to happen to the church? We still keep it open. When we come back, if we come back, is it going to be church as usual? Is it going to be, my, is my work going to be as usual? These are the questions that are, you know, just over our heads and we are wondering what's going to happen. And um, you're probably wondering, why did I bring up the scripture? What does the scripture have to do with that? You see, what you need to understand is this. Anytime that there's a wedding and there's no wine, that's a problem. A wedding without wine in the Eastern context of things. What I mean by that? In, in, in the Middle East where the story was written and the culture for which it was written under. Amen? When it, when it happened. It's a different 
perspective from when we here in the West have a party. I mean, you all see what's happening in the police after going on a shutdown party because we just have party. We have party with wine, no wine, Pepsi, whatever. We just find something for our party and we just have a party. But in, but in those times, in, in, the, in, the, in the Eastern culture side of things, a wedding without wine was, a, was a, 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 a very disrespectful testimony of the family to its guest. It, 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 it shows that there was no respect for the guest. It shows that the family was not an integral one. It's not a good thing for their reputation. So for a, for a wedding to not have wine is a serious thing. I'm using that as a metaphor because that's how the Holy Spirit led me to say it's similar to what we're going through right now. We are in a life but we're running out of wine. There's no wine. In other words, things are changing to the point where this wedding is not going to look the same because there'll be no wine. There is no wine. And what I want you to take away from this more than anything else is not, you know, the whole thing about no wine and no wedding and all that kind of stuff. It's really how Jesus, Mary, and the servants responded in that moment of crisis. Because I believe it's a very interesting lesson for us to learn. Amen? It's a very interesting lesson for us to learn. In the Bible, in the Bible, wine is a sign of God's blessings. Psalms 104 verse 15, that's one scripture. Proverbs 3 10, those two scriptures and there are many more that will show you how much when, when the Bible refers to wine, it's a sign of God's blessings. So, to, so, so basically, this wedding was in a crisis because there was no blessing. What does that mean for you? You're in a job, but there's no, there's no finances. There's, there's no, nothing coming from it. You're, 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 you know, in a place where it maybe, maybe it could even go that you're in a marriage and there's no, there's no love. In other words, whatever, whatever you are at, that there seems to be no life, no spirit. You're in a church and it's a function. People are gathered, but there's no spirit. Amen. So what do you do when you are in this type of crisis? What do you do? What should be the Christian's response? What is your response in all of this? A couple of things I said last week, I just want to bring it back to you real quickly, and then we'll move on from there. The first thing you need to do is don't miss your Mary. What do I mean by don't miss your Mary? Don't miss your Mary. In other words, Mary was the one who spoke up. Mary was the one who spoke up in all of this and took the initiative. It's not her party. And she was the one who went to Jesus and said, listen, something is wrong. They're running out of wine. And because she did that, Jesus said to her, listen, leave, woman, leave me alone. And he dismissed her. Yet she still said, she had the insight and the foresight to turn to the, to the, to the, to the, the, the servants, the people in the party, and said, listen to me. Do whatever he says. Very key. Don't miss your Mary. What do I mean by that? Don't miss the people in your life who will say things to you that will be crucial to your next move in the, in the crisis you're in, but because you think you're the only one that hears from God, you, don't, you, don't, you miss what they said to you. What would have happened if those, if those servants would have gone, no, 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 I need to hear him say whatever, or you know, just ignore because she's a woman. Come on now. When she told them what to do, they paid attention, and they, they humbled themselves, and they listened yeah. to Mary. And, I, and, I, and I, you know, like I said, you can go back to the video um, of last week and, and you know, see how, how I go into that, uh, you know. In ex, in, in, you know, with a, in, with, you know, I really went in deeply into it to reveal, you know, some, some powerful stuff. But there's some other stuff that I wanted to show you from that. Watch this. Don't, don't miss this. I was looking up, I was looking up what she said, what she said. Um, when she said, you know, when she said, um, whatever he says, do it. And I was studying out that word and... It, it's, it's really, when they think about it, it's a Greek. She was speaking in the Greek. And in, in that Greek language, the words she used, do whatever he tells you to do. If you really study it, it it's, it's, it's an interrogative type of language. In other words, when she said it, she wasn't saying, well, you know, I think you should do what, you, you know, what he says to do. She was aggressively, like, in other words, the boss lady stood up in the room and said, hear me now. Uno, do what he said to do. Come on now. In other words, she was aggressive. She was confident in what she said, you know, that they must do. And I'm asking you, who is that Mary in your life? Who is the Mary in your life that, watch me now, you have given the entrance to speak into your life, 
that you're going down a particular road you think this is what you should do in the crisis you're in right now you know what is my next move with my job what is my next move with you know making money going forward what is my next move in terms of church what is my next move with my family who is the Mary in your life that when they speak to you you stop and go okay didn't see it that way because you know hey Jesus just told her leave him alone yet she tells us something that when you really think about it wow you know that's challenging who do I believe here what, what am I what am I gonna do so here's my point here's my point to you who is the Mary that in your life that you allow to speak into your life that challenges you to say things that you did not hear or, or, or do you only listen to yourself if you don't hear God say it to you you don't you don't you don't pray about anything anybody else said to you how would you know who Mary is in your life let me tell you how you know who Mary is in your life couple of things Mary has entrance into your life what I mean by that Mary has entrance you have given Mary entrance in other words Mary is not trying to be your, your friend she's not she's not trying to be a yes yes man or your yes person She's not your, you say something, she go, eh, mm -hmm. <laughs> But Mary will listen to you say something and go, hold on there. You sure about that? That makes sense? Or did you think of it this way? I'm, I'm the pastor, senior pastor of this church, Family Word and Worship. But trust me, if any day, Family Word and Worship members hear me tell them next week, say, okay guys, well everybody will come to church now and when we come to church, you know, sell everything you have and bring it, bring it and put it in my pocket. Everything you have, everybody bring every penny you own and bring it into my, bring it completely in my pocket. Trust me, there are a bunch of Marys that are around me called the board, called the leadership, who would say, hold on a minute. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, that don't make any sense. That's not what the Spirit of the Lord says. And then there's even people over me who, are, who have given that entrance, pastors in my life, Dr. Sam Vassal, Pastor David Henry, Pastor Ron Earl, Pastor Che Cowan. These are people who speak into my life we're brothers we're brethren but in the same token they have they have the see because mary knows you better than anybody else mary knew jesus better than anybody else she's mother she nursed him so when he says something she can look at him and challenge him and say hey <laughs> you sure son i mean come on let's do this this needs to be done and make she made him do something that was before his time and he obliged. Amen. Mary also has no hidden agenda towards you. She don't have any hidden agenda. My, the mentors in my life, they're not trying to own me. I don't, I don't pay them money every month to be connected to them. Let that sit for a minute. Come on. Hmm? They just love me. They just want to see me successful in the Lord. The success that happens at Family Word and Worship Church is their success. Why? Because it's a kingdom success. Come on now. Hmm? So when they, when, they, when they talk to me, when they walk into my life and, and pour into my life and, they, and they, they challenge me, it's because they know whenever fruit is, is produced now, they go. Amen? So there's no hidden agenda to own me, to manipulate me. I don't have to big them up. I don't have to constantly be telling people, well, I believe them burnt me into the ministry. That, what is that? Come on now. Hmm? If, you are, if you are a Mary in my life, then you just play your role, do what you do, and we don't hear nothing about you after that. After Acts moving from Acts coming up, we don't hear nothing about you anymore. Come on, talk to me. Your mama. But, you're, you, but that's, not the, that's not the agenda. The agenda is let God be glorified in all of this. Amen. Another thing about Mary is Mary's is, Mary is very humble. Mary is one of humility. When you look at Mary's life individually and personally, they, they don't want the glory. They, they, just, they, they want God to be glorified. In the story, Mary says, do whatever he says. And then after that, we don't hear nothing about Mary. She steps back and she watches the glory of the Lord being, get, gets manifested. That's it. So the Marys in your life, when they speak to you, when they talk about you, they don't have to be, you know, seen. And their and their life individually apart from you, when you when you when you when you're referencing them and saying, you know, Mary so and so, or you know, Mary is this person, or Mary is pastor so and so, 
people look at their life, they can see integrity, they can see humility. They're not people trying to be build, you know, to be stars and build their brand and build their names. Come on now. These are people who constantly want God to get the glory. Amen, somebody? The other thing we talked about was don't miss your miracle. Don't miss the miracle in your midst. In other words, there are things in your home that can change, that God can use now to, be your, to become your blessing. You know, watch this. Ceremonial pots were not supposed to collect wine. But Jesus turned the water into wine in ceremonial pots. He could have done it in the bottles of wine that were already empty. For the night but he used ceremonial vessels in other words what is in your house right now that god is showing you for you to start your new business that's going that to carry you going forward when things shift in other words when things shift don't panic look at what is in front of you what god could be god is doing because trust me if things shift the god who loves you and will provide for you may have that thing right under your nose and you don't know some of you have gifts inside of you right now that are in you that you you know you 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 didn't even remember you have or or or, or, or it's been dormant for a long time but God is bringing it back to, to, to let you know it, it's still there. But this is the crisis that brings that out. Amen. Somebody. The third thing we talked about is that you must make room for the miracle. If you expect God to move in a powerful way, then make make room for it. Fill the jars. Don't leave them half empty. Fill the jars. And we and we talked about how this this wedding. When, when, the, when, the jar, when, when, the, when the water turned into wine, it produced 1,000 bottles of wine. In other words, after the, after the, um, the, 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 um, the, wedding, the wedding, there was enough supply, there was enough supply there that could last, you know, to, 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 to feed the, 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 the new couple. Come on, talk to me. Amen? By the way, what I'm, sharing this with you any questions you may have about this or about any other thing when it comes to you know um you know the, the word of the lord or what, what's going on currently right now just send them send it to me I, I, you know i'll try and answer them as we go um throughout this broadcast amen amen so don't 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 overlook what god is doing in, in your life what he's what he's placing in front of you you know he, he's able to turn whatever you have water into wine Right under your nose, the thing, very thing that you've been overlooking. Amen. God is going to use that right now to be a blessing to you. And the fourth thing we shared last week was you must maximize the moment. When He tells you what to do, when He gives you the, 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 the you know, the go ahead, you know, and show you, don't, don't procrastinate. It's not time to sit back and go, okay, you know, I'll wait, maybe I'll wait until things cool off. And you know we'll, we'll we'll do that next do that next year. Amen. And we you know we'll, I pray about it some more. Sometimes you don't have time to pray about certain things. When God says it and you you, you feel it and there's a window, there's an opportunity for you to, to to be obedient. Amen. Somebody. Praise the Lord. And we talked we talked you know Sunday and I touched on it briefly, but I want to go back to it because I I thought it was a very important point. John chapter four. I'm sorry. John chapter four verse forty six. Once more, Jesus again visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. So this, is, so this story I'm giving you now is after the wedding, right? And there was a certain royal officer whose son laid sick at Capernaum. When, he, when this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. The royal official said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Verse 50, go, Jesus replied, your son will live. The man took Jesus, don't miss this, the man took Jesus at his word and departed. Very key. He took Jesus at his word, he believed him, and he moved back to his home. In other words, he showed Jesus, I hear you, I believe you, we have nothing more to grapple, grapple with, we don't have to worry about nothing. I am going home because I believe what you say. Verse 51, while he was still on the way, his servant met him with the news that the boy was living. When he inquired of the time when his son got better, they said to him, yesterday, at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that this was the exact time of which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. And I shared with you last week that this journey from Capernaum to Cana was 18 miles. Three daytime, daylight 
journeying days, right? From sun up to sundown, okay? You don't travel at night because of, you know, safety and just, you just can't see where you're going, amen? So, watch this. This healing took place when the, when the, when the, 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 the people from his household met him. He was, he was halfway on the journey back. And he inquired and said to them, when did this happen? And they told him. And when they told him when it happened, when the healing started, was right at the time when he started to walk away to go back home. Come on, somebody. When God gives you, when God gives you, uh, uh, when God gives you a uh, opportunity, you have to seize the moment. Amen. You must seize the moment. There are certain times that we don't, you know. Procrastination, trust me, is one of the things that really trouble us as believers if we're not careful. Amen, somebody? And I just want to encourage you. I just want to encourage you that in this time of crisis, in this time of crisis when you're dealing with certain things and you're wondering, oh my goodness, what do I do? What do I do? What, 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 what's going to happen? What's going to happen? This, it is very crucial that you spend time hearing God because when he speaks, whether it's through Mary or whether it's directly to you, it is very crucial, very key what you do how you respond in this time for the next i don't know maybe year or so for what we're going to have to deal with the backlash of all of this christian listen to me it is very key that you hear your god and hear him clearly so that you can come out of this victorious there's a couple more things i want to show you from the scripture that the lord gave me um today and i, and I believe it will, it will bless you Here's another one. One more. Don't be out of order at this time. Don't be out of order. What do I mean by don't, don't be out of order? There is an order, spiritual order, that you have to maintain. This is not the time now to, in your isolation, isolate yourself from spiritual order and spiritual flow. What do I mean by this? Let me show you. Verse 7. Jesus said to the servants, now, servants in this passage of scripture would, would, would basically represent us today in the church right so Jesus said to the servants fill the jar with water watch this water right there is the word water in the scriptures always is a symbolic metaphor for, for, for the word of the Lord amen fill the jars with water so they fill them to the brim that verse 8 then he told them now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet they did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. Amen? Watch this. Watch this. Right there in, this, in these two verses is, a, is an interesting dynamic that I think we as church and Christians now need to remember. Watch this. They're at the party. Watch this. They're at the wedding, and wine is finished, and he tells them how to, 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 what to do. To get the new to get the new wine he tells them put fill the jars they fill the jars and they have the wine watch this he did not tell them to go take the wine now and serve it to, to other to, to the people he told them to bring it to the master of the banquet don't miss that the master of the banquet when you study that is the word archetriacos amen and it really, it literally means the superintendent or the head waiter. If you look at it from, the, from a metaphor, as a metaphor to what, to what we are now today as a church, the head waiter would be spiritual authority. That's the person who in the wedding, while the, fest, while the things is, are going on, there is somebody who regulates things. Or else what will happen is that we have spirit serving going on all over the place. Talk to me. And before you know it, you're feeding on all different types of spirits. And there isn't order. Because here's what's going on and I see it and I'm, I'm going to deal with it. Because the Holy Spirit said to deal with it. In these times now when we get vulnerable... Whole heap of spirits start fly all over the place and everybody is drinking. Because we want something to make us feel good. Watch me. Jesus get, told the instruction of, the, of the, the servants fill the jars with water. In other words, fill yourself with the word. 
you fill yourself with the word when it comes to the spirit now there are spiritual people who you trust and know in your life they will serve the wine and what will happen is because you are filled with the word when you see a spirit that comes to you that it does not line up with the word you will know or else what will happen to you you'll be chasing all different types of spirit all over the place and you get yourself in trouble saints this is the time to keep the order I'm a pastor a pastor near about 150 160 people in, in the church that Pastor Trudy and I you know um, lead watch me people come to me all the time pastor I'm making this move in my life I'm doing this I'm making this decision pray with me about it we pray I am NOT anybody's God so, so let me just make that very clear let me balance the thing I am NOT here to sell a cult amen but in the same token the headmaster of the banquet is very key in your life spiritual authority is very key in your life and especially when it comes to how a church operates there is order at this time as a church let me talk to the pastors hold the order don't you let nobody come in and speak into your church now and 19 different prophets talking before you know it your sheep scattered and them confused and don't know what is going on over here say my little church are going of the of the let's pray 12 12 hours every day over here say them my little church are going where let's just don't pray and have a party all the time and over here so let's just you know believe this prophet and let's believe the shutting no let's go out on the road and let's keep church because we're not afraid of corona and all kind of things it, it just all kind of wine is being served right now listen to me keep the order and if you're in a church and you don't know what the order is, look to your headmaster, the head servant. That's why God entrusted him or her to you at this time. God knew this was coming. That's why he connected you to the church. He connected you to two years ago. Come on. Amen, somebody? Type amen. Come on, talk to me. If you have a question, come on, send it in. Woo! Come on. I love this. I love this. Send it in. Send it in. Let's talk. Let's talk. Second thing I want to share with you from, from you know, from, from all of this. Isn't the word awesome? You, just, you go into it and it, you think you're going to think you're finished. And, you know, I, I preached from this now by a couple of weeks now. And then, you know, here we are and there's more coming out of it. Here's another interesting nugget I want to show you. I call this one, ain't nobody got time for that. Because watch this. Hear me now, saints. I want to talk to family word and worship, and I want to talk to the saints. Not because you have more time, time on your hands don't mean you have time for everything. Very key. Because what I'm noticing, all of a sudden, the world, there's a lot of people out there now who are looking on what's going on, and they're saying now, where is your God in all of this? They're going to hold you talk us down. Church, where are you? Come on, church, where are you? Church, where's your power? Come on, church. Jesus said in verse 4, Woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. In other words, I have an agenda. I'm doing something. I know where I'm going. In other words, Jesus, Jesus, okay. Though he said that, he indulged her. She said, no, son. And she turned to the people and she said, do whatever I say. But watch me. It doesn't mean because he in, in, indulged her. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that because, you know, he, um, what you call it now? He obliged her that he's going to be proving himself at all times for every miracle that comes, you know, in front of him. Watch this. Because though he obliged her, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 5, when the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple, verse 6, the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in, in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Verse 7, Jesus answered him, It is also written, do not put your Lord, your God, to the test. 
What am I talking about? Let's get straight to it. There was an opportunity for Jesus to show his, 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 his miraculous powers, his deity. And he obliged. What the devil said to him in this scripture was also an opportunity for him to show his powers and his connection with deity, that he was God. But he didn't. What am I saying? I'm saying to you, when people come out here telling you about where is your God? Come on, now, come on, now, Christians, lay hands on, on the corona people now and show your miraculous power of your God. My God does not need to prove himself to nobody. As a matter of fact, when them ask, when them tell you that, you say back to them, we have been doing this for a year, 2,000 years. Talk to me. The body of Christ have been laying hands on people and, what get, and they get healed for 2,000 years now. Where are you there? So all of a sudden, because you want to prove something, you are challenging us to prove something to you. When did you, when, when, when did you become the person who, who's the approval of authority as to who's God and who's not God? And if my God is God now, the devil is a liar. We ain't got time for that. We ain't got time for that. Church, we ain't got time to entertain that. And that's all we're going to say about that. In this time, we speak love, we speak life, we deal with people, we do what our God tells us to do, and that's who we follow. Because if you look at the word, I'm going to show it to you again. In one scripture, she challenged him and she said, we don't have any wine. And he said, it's not my time. Get the miracle. The devil looked at him and said, the word said, if you, if you jump, if you, if you are falling, your God will save you. That's what the word said. And he said, listen, in the same token, the word said, do not test, my, test the God, the God, our God Almighty. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. So all those people who are talking, 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 Christians, listen to me. We ain't got time for that. We don't need to prove our God. He's been proven for, from, from, the, from eternity, from, from the beginning of time till eternity. Come on. Come on. I've seen him the miracles. He don't have to do another one through me for me to believe that he's God. And I don't need you to see him do a miracle for you to, 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 to say, okay, he's authentic. Keep, do, keep doing what you're doing. We believe whether you believe or not. Come on now. Can I preach? Amen? Third thing I want to show you, and I'm, and I'm finished. We can wrap it up. Third thing. At this particular time, we ain't got time for that. We, 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 will, we will keep the, we stay in the order of things, in the spiritual order of things. And here's the next one. At this time, here's what we choose to do. We now become a part of the servanthood and not the critics. Here's what I mean by that. Watch me. Are you filling the pots? Are you pouring the wine? Jesus turned to the servants and he said, fill the pots. Pour the wine. Pour the wine. What are you doing? In this time you have now, are you sitting back, jumping on and logging on to every little thing that is said that you shouldn't have time for? Or are you taking this time and going, who am I calling and encouraging? Who may need food? And, and I, I have two tin of these, so guess what? Me no say, Gigi na na food, so I'm going to call Gigi. I say, what? You all right? Why well, I me mean, not, you know, my girl, because why things talk them, them tell me, say, you know, work now, go on. All right, see so you're, so you're starting a bully beef, so all that. Come on, somebody. Are you pouring the wine? How many hours did you spend today worrying about the, and looking at 35,000 different news about Corona and, and, and the destruction of the world and this prophet and that prophet? Or did you call somebody and encourage them? Did you put on a pot of rice and split it for you and your neighbor? I said, I have your back in this time. Are you pouring the wine? Or are you letting people get into your head and bring more fear to you? Become a part of the servanthood. Pastors, 
Worry about your church. Don't worry about your church. And who go and give? Give. You give. Church, you give. Find where your people are and check if them are right and you make sure they're okay. Don't, you don't have to worry about, 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 about getting an offerings and keep, don't, you don't have to worry about that. If you give, if you take care of the people, the people will take care of you. I prophesy that to you. You want to hear a prophet? Let me prophesy to you. If you take care of God's people, God's people will take care of you. If you preach to their heads, then you'll get their heads. If you preach to their hearts and touch their hearts, you'll get their hearts. And when you get their hearts, trust me, you and them will be one like family, real family. You don't have to tell them to give. Trust me. You don't have to twist their arm and do no tricks. Serve. Family word and worship, we've been going around and touching our people and who needs help will give them. And and, and let me be honest with you. We're not a a, a rich church that have, you know, you know, a whole heap of money that we can line up cars and give people. You know, our line of people, and give, we would love to, but we don't. We give what we have. But guess what? We're giving. Why? Because we believe God. We trust our God. We listen to what He said. We pray, and we say, "Okay, God, this is what You're saying. This is what we'll do. Become a part of the servanthood. You ain't got time to listen to no foolishness." Amen? And make sure you're about the order. What I mean by about the order, the spiritual order, you're about lining up with your with, with the spiritual authorities in your life. Don't, don't, this is not time off. Somebody, somebody writes in, is spiritual order and divine order the same? No, spiritual order is when we talk about spiritual order, spiritual order is about, in this case, we're talking about the, 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 the connection you have with the, with the, with the, the people that God has knitted you with, like it's your pastors, your mentor, who in your life that is, you know, with you. Divine order, that's something that I, I mean, I hear them talk about, you know, in different faiths. Um, you know, I don't, divine, I'm thinking divine must mean God and what, what is the creator. And, you know, so I, I'm not really sure about what that is. But, but for, for the Christian, for the Bible, when you talk about spiritual order, you know, Paul teaches about that in, 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 in many of the New Testament scriptures that he writes to the church. Um, you know, especially church in Corinth and Corinthians and Timothy and, and Titus and those books. He talks about, you know, spiritual order in terms of the church and how the church works and how God has put these things in place to protect us spiritually, not only to protect us, but to also help us to, to be, to function healthy, for a healthy Christian function. Amen. But divine order, I am not, I'm not sure about what that, what that is. But, I, you, know, I, you know, I think I have an idea, but I, I don't want to speak on it because... That's not the faith that I, um, you know, operate with. Amen. Spiritual order to me is biblical. Order of how spiritually God, the church, people, um, and people in your life that you interact with that feed you and that you're connected and help you to help you to grow as a believer. Amen. Any other questions that anybody else has? Please, you know, feel free to, um, you know. To send them in, we love to, you know, to answer answer the questions. Amen, somebody. And and, and you probably you're probably wondering to, to yourself. Let me, let me finish with this. You probably wondering to yourself, but Pastor, why is all of this happening? Don't miss the, the scripture we, we read a while ago. At the end of the scripture, it says this. It says, verse eleven. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples. Believe in. Watch me. Trust me. Trust me. God is going to get glory out of this season we're going, going through. Nothing that God allows to happen, he doesn't turn it and use it for his glory. Our God is not surprised by this. Our God is not scratching his head, wondering what's going to happen. The enemy will never win. Corona will never win. Trust me. Am, am, am I sorry that people have passed away? Absolutely. I don't know how the numbers are right now, but it's, it, it's it's too many people. Whatever number it is, it's that number too many. Nobody, I don't I don't wish for no man to perish. But in the same token, my God is going to use this. Believe me. But we the believers and we people who are listening, he who has an ear, let him hear. From this, 
you need to, to be sensitive to what's going on and how you respond is going to be very crucial. I encourage you, keep your ears locked to the Lord. Keep your spirit open to, this, to the Lord and what he's doing at this time. Amen. If you have any further questions, you know, even after this, 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 this program, you know, you can, you know, call our church, Family Word and Worship, or WhatsApp us. Um, we're also on WhatsApp. It's 876-539-1050. We're more than happy to, to, you know, talk to you or about anything that you want to talk about. By the way, pe um, people from our church have been, you know, talking about giving. Most of our people have been calling in and they're giving um, their regular tithes and offering. That we, you know, that, let me tell you how you can do, continue to do that. Once again, 876-539-1050. 876-539-1050. You can just call and our WhatsApp. and um, Preferably WhatsApp. It's much easier if you WhatsApp. And we'll send you the information as to how you can continue you know, giving. Amen. We love you. Um, we can't, I can't, I don't know what you, I'm praying real hard that God will just, you know, just turn this thing around real quickly. And uh, we will, the prime minister will give us the go ahead to go back to church where we can be together. You know, this is okay. This is that, this is a good medium and we're using it for the glory of God. But trust me, I really do miss seeing you guys. You know, I want to reach out, especially right now to Teresa who's recovering and, you know, she's at home and it's good to have you home, but we're praying for your, you know, your healing, amen. And we just, you know, you know, we just reach out to you at this moment and just bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. And all the other saints that I haven't seen in a long time, which I miss, you know, God bless you. We love you. I mean, can you imagine the first service in the building? Oh my God, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Amen, amen. Any other question before we go? We have a couple more minutes, about three or two, three to two minutes left. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe. What else? Like, subscribe, and share. You know, whether you're on IG or, or whether you're on YouTube, YouTube or you're on Facebook. Family word and worship. Amen. 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 God bless you. Pastor, love you. Oh, there's a another question. Another question. <laughs> amen. 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 We love you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once next week, next Wednesday again, we'll be back. At this time, because of the, the curfew, we'll be back at 6 o'clock this time. Uh, and then Sunday, Sunday church as usual, well, as new usual, amen. 10.30, online, YouTube, IG, Facebook, 10.30, Family Word and Worship, where you'll see, um, you know, we'll, we'll give you praise and worship, and we'll do the regular, you know, preaching of the word. Please tell a friend, please, you know, gather your family up Sunday morning at 10.30, and we'll have church just as, you know, We'll try and have church as usual, and hopefully it will be a blessing to you. God bless you. We love you. Pastor Trudy sends her love. Pastor Colin, the whole family, church family, and leadership, we love you. Thank you so much for, for, for touching base with us. God bless you. Hallelujah.